Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about Kanbans. And we're going to talk about how a Kanban works in manufacturing. And we're going to do this from two points of view. The first is going to be from a company that manufactures from a fixed bill of materials. And in this case, they make the same product day in, day out. And the second one is going to be from a company that uses a semi-fixed bill of materials. And this example is going to cover um, perhaps a company that's using a push-pull strategy where they are pre-manufacturing most of their finished good, but then they're letting their customer decide upon customizable options, okay? So let's take a look at the first scenario. What I've done here is I've basically outlined four, you know, example operations that might be included in turning a raw material into an industrial finished good, okay? And we're just going to go over these four operations, and then I'm going to show you how the Kanban agreement, uh, basically, or the Kanban structure, works from the finished goods backwards, okay? So... With this particular product, you've got cutting and let's say you've got cleaning. So these two operations in this first portion need to be done in order to move the semi-finished good to the next chain in the process, which involves CNC and perhaps your CNCing aluminum or invar and you have to do tap tolls or what have you. These two operations need to be done in order to move the product or the semi-finished good to the next operation, which is soldering and perhaps you're you know, deburring or drilling and tapping or whatever you have to do. These two operations need to be done in order to move to the fourth stage. And in the fourth stage, tuning, assembling, and labeling has to be done in order to turn that into a finished good. Now, within a Kanban system, there are semi-finished products in each one of these four stages. And they are all in a holding pattern. They're basically waiting to see what happens with the finished good quantity. Okay? So this is essentially how the Kanban would work. Let's say you have a quantity of 10 units boxed waiting to ship out to your customer, okay? Everything begins and ends with what happens to this finished good quantity within the Kanban. Now, long before we had the benefit of MRP systems and tracking work orders and tracking cycle time variances, Kanbans were all visual cues, okay? They were all based on visual cues and verbal communication from one operation to the, to the next, okay? So in this case, you've got 10 units that are box finished waiting to go, and you've got semi-finished goods in each one of these operations. What will happen is, when these 10 units have been purchased by your customers, let's say customers have come in, they bought all of those finished goods, this portion is gonna say, you know what? We have an inventory count of zero. And they're gonna send that message to the fourth operation, and they're going to say, you need to replenish the finished good count. So the fourth operation will finish off these last two operations, and they will move those products into the finished good stage. However, the fourth operation now registers an inventory count of zero, and their message and their need will go to the third operation, and they will tell the third operation, please finish what you have to do and move your products so that we can eliminate this zero inventory count. So the third operation will do what they have to do and they'll move the products forward. Now the third operation has a zero inventory count. They will send a message to the second. The second will finish what they have to do and when they are finished their inventory count will be zero and they will send that message to the first operation which will finish what they have to do and it'll move it to the second operation. However, when their operation shows an inventory count is zero, that message goes out to the vendor. We need raw material and consumables, what have you. So the Kanban system works from what happens to the finished good count. And each one of these operations has semi-finished product waiting to see what happens with the finished good count. And the reason why it's a visual system is that at one time, individuals used to hold up cards. Okay? They used to hold up cards and say, we have a zero count, or they used to verbally tell the previous operation, we need you to replenish us. Okay, so it's a pretty simple system, but it works nonetheless. Now, what we're going to do with this semi-fixed semi semi bill of materials example is, what we're looking at in this case is, here's a company that basically manufactures products that can be considered as customized. Okay, however, to start from scratch, based on a customer order would take too long. So they want to shorten their product to market lead time. So what they're doing in this case is they are pre-manufacturing the majority of the product, okay? So they're pre-manufacturing the assembly or the finished good. And let's say they pre-manufacture 80%. Now, 
This is something that a lot of companies do when it comes to emulating Dell. And I did a video about Dell's push-pull and I covered this inside of it. Okay, it's also a portion of an interview that I did with the Institute of Supply Chain Management. But essentially what this company is doing, it is pre-manufacturing and it is assembling this portion of the finished good uh, in order to be ready. And the remaining 20% okay, of the finished good is going to be driven by options. Options that the company controls. Okay? And the customer can choose any one of these options. And these options only include 20% of the work in order to finish off the assembly. So they pre-manufacture 80%, they combine it with the customer's options in order to have uh, a finished good count. So in this case, the, the, the Kanban is going to work from the mindset of what happens with those customizable options. Okay? So with the fixed bill of materials, you had a situation where you're making the same product day in, day out, no deviation. You do not deviate from your fixed bill of materials, making the same product every day. But in this case, you have variations. Okay? So what they've done is perhaps, you know, we've gone from one to two to three to four in this example. Perhaps what they've done is with the pre-manufacturing stage, they've gone from one to three. Okay? And this 20% is the fourth stage. Okay? So it's a little bit different. But by and large, it's basically the same approach. Everything begins and ends with your finished goods. Your finished good counts determine what happens with the previous stages within a Kanban agreement. So that's it, Kanban. Um, an example of fixed and semi-fixed bill of materials. Take care, Ian Johnson, DriveYourSuccess.com. Bye-bye.